Now, the easiest case is that when you take this specific system and you buy a completely new set of laptops, the laptops typically are around 5,500. Now they are thinking of going to 8,500, but it gives you a certain perspective. These laptops with printer, the rest that cost around 3,500 to 4,000. They will buy around 8,000 of them, send them to different registration areas, and people will go there and register. That's more or less what we are talking about here. They are saying that you can take all of these, every single one that they have now, and throw all of them away. Take every single one of these, throw all of them away, wipe away the software, throw away the satellites, buy a completely new system. And if you did that, you will still save this country $38 million. Where did they get this from? They say that they've gone and asked the people that maintain the existing system. And they've told them that if they were to refresh it and refurbish it, because it's too old, remember? If they were to refresh it and improve it, it would cost $74 million. But if they buy a new one, it would be $56 million. And I've already explained the point they have made about the registration. So if you add all that together, you save about $38 million. That's what we are going to go into in very clear detail. Because in this country, people have a tendency of putting words in people's mouths. I just wanted you to see the EC's own way of putting the point that I've just made. They've told you that if you buy the BVR or the BVD for the existing one and you try and improve it by refurbishing or whatever, this is what you, it will cost. If you get a whole new system, this is what it will cost. This is the savings that you will make. So this is the savings you make on technology alone. And they've also made the point that when it comes to registration, the cost in 2012 of doing a new register cost a certain amount. In 2015, just registering those who have now 10 of age cost a certain amount. So when you compare it, registering only those who have 10, 18, and those who still are not on the register is more expensive. And therefore, doing the whole registration again is cheaper. And when you combine all of that, you save another $20 million. So in total, we're now talking about $38 million. How did they arrive at the conclusion that the existing system is so bad that even attempts to repair it will cost more? They said that because the system has been used since 2011, when we bought them. And since we bought the system in 2011 up to now, we've not changed it. This is the EC's own words. You see, this is a PowerPoint they presented to CSOs. Most of you may have seen this circulated in your media houses. So it's a very simple argument. We bought the thing in 2011. It's almost 10 years now. It's been so old that when you try and repair it, it costs more money. So let's buy a new one. That's really the easiest case. So let's delve into it. And for both the BVR and the BVD, which I have just explained to you, think of them as one is like a mobile phone that can authenticate your hand. The other is like a laptop which you use to register. Think of it roughly like that. Good. What we are saying at the core of our argument is that that is not true. End of story. The argument that the system is so old that if you try and refresh it, it will cost more, is not true. In fact, if you try to refresh the existing system, you try and refurbish it, buy a few new ones, and take out only the ones that are truly broken, you will not spend more than $15 million. And if you tried and did a registration of only those who have 10, 18, you will not spend more than $20 million. Why? It is very simple. You will register about 2 million new people. If you try and register 17 million, new, uh, uh, 17 million voters all over again, you just have to hire more people, you have to buy more material, and it takes longer. So it just costs more. Anybody who will try and convince you that it doesn't cost more, doesn't have any regard for the truth. End of story. But we are going to give you more evidence than that because we've just also put out a number. How are we getting these numbers? There are places in this country where every single dollar, every single CD of public money you spend, records get generated somehow. In all of these debates, I think those of you in the media should have gone for some of this information. Because some people were putting another set of numbers, and other people were putting another set of numbers. But in order not to, because I know you are busy, in order to waste more of your time, we've gone and done that for you. We've gone to the Ministry of Finance's records, because don't forget, all the easiest money is the tax. Every time you buy um, soap, there is some VAT and whatever on it. All that money is what has been aggregated, and some of it is being sent to the EC to run the election. The Ministry of Finance is the one that releases that money through the Accountant General, Control Accountant General, and the rest. So they have a record of how much money is being spent by the EC. And for the EC to get that money, they must tell them what they are using the money for. In 2016 and 2018, the EC went to the Ministry of Finance and collected money to buy, as you can see here, 500 new BVR and spent additional money 
on biometric systems. 2018, they went and bought 2,000 more of these devices. That's 2,500 a row. Now, remember what I said? We started with around 5,500 of these devices. Hmm? They've added on top of these devices new ones that they've bought, right? How can you, after having done that, then come out and say that the system is so old because the whole system dates from 2011? That's the argument you must put to the EC. Because the rep, either the Minister of Finance, somebody said, you see, when you look carefully here, you will see that it says that past years, what was spent in 2016 and 2017, and that is where this is lodged. Here it says past years, and it says 2018, this is how much you bought. Either somebody said they've given this money to the EC to buy 2,000 laptops, each accompanied with a printer, a camera, and a scanner, and that somehow that money didn't go to the EC, and somebody kept that millions of dollars at the financial finance, or the EC is lying. One of them must be lying. Ministry of Finance or the EC. Because if the system entirely dates from 2011, and we have records showing that we are buying more and more of them 2016 and 2018, then somebody is lying to Ghanaians. It's a very simple argument. If you accept the argument you are making that we trust the data from the Ministry of Finance, but they are politicians, mm -hmm. right? And sometimes politicians also do funny things. Auditor General, the EC is a public agency. When they say we are independent, it doesn't mean that because they are independent, when they take our money, nobody should go and take a look. That's why they are audited. That is why the EC cannot sack somebody and say because we are independent, we've sacked them without cause. The person can go to court or go to the labor courts or go to the labor commission. So that's why they are independent. They are subject to all the public sector regulations and constraints that every other agency is subject to. And that is why they are audited. And when they are audited, you can see from 2016 that they are spending a lot of money on this biometric stuff. You see, voter management system upgrade and rollout training. Voter management system is the software that sits in the district office that they use to register people and keep their names and do adjudication, etc., etc. And look how much they are spending. $1.15 million, April 2016. You can see that they did some preparation of VVD and ancillary service. They spent, what, $14 million. This is money you are talking about, too. Buying laptops and repairing laptops and things like that. $14 million. This is all 2016. Look at how much they spent on the BVR case that they are saying that are completely obsolete. $2 million. For the same biometric equipment, $10 million. These are all 2016. Releasing $40 million on a system they say is obsolete because in 2011 there will be no investment in it. When the Auditor General's Auditor Account Statement say otherwise. We also now have parliamentary Franklin said that we're going to have new disclosures. We also now have parliamentary oversight documents that show that members of parliament that sit on the oversight committee, it's often called a special budget committee, are aware of these purchases because it's captured in their reports. And we'll share some of that data with you, including the pages where you can capture them and the names of those reports. So not only is the EC complicit in this matter, we are now seeing a situation where members of parliament who know for sure that the EC take this money and buy this equipment, sit in this country, and some of them actually go on radio stations defending the EC. You have to ask yourself why. We call it state capture. So the person or the individual responsible for placing the EC under oversight is on radio stations as a legislator, and his primary job is defending the EC. Makes no sense. Your job as a legislator is to say, well, they came before us and they made these claims. We asked them these questions, they gave these answers, and that's the information. We also look at how much we often buy this equipment for. And this is not necessarily this administration. This has been going on for years. And it turns out that we are spending too much. And it's not that difficult to, to think about. You all have laptops. You all have an idea what a laptop costs, what a camera costs, what a scanner costs. And you put it together and add a printer. When somebody tells you that's $3,500 to $4,000, you don't have to be a genius. You don't have to have a PhD. You have to start wondering, are we really getting value for money? $4,000 for some laptop and printer and printer, this thing, there's something in there. And it's not therefore surprising that even countries like Zimbabwe and the like get it far cheaper than we do. We are spending as almost three times more Zimbabwe what Zimbabwe does. When you add all that up, it comes to this simple conclusion. They have, since 2011, it's a lie that we've not bought any new equipment and everything dates back to 2011. We spend in old things. 
So if we have to do anything, we just have to do a few you need if you want to improve or maintain the current system. End of story. It will cost you far less. If we allow them to continue doing what they are doing, then as I've explained to you, it will mean that this is the amount of losses this country has to rack up. Almost $150 million. Because it's not only the new hardware that you are buying, you are also buying new software. Remember, the tender that they just did was only for hardware. They did another tender for software. And I'll tell you a little bit more about that. But there's another interesting point. Remember the argument they made. They said if you buy a new system, you spend only about $56 million. And it will cost you $74 million to repair and to maintain. Where did they get that $56 million from? They were doing a tender. That tender, they are seeing some numbers already. And it was evident that that was not the number. What it will actually cost them to procure new systems is what was revealed when the tender ended. And that was about $72 million. So there too, they clearly lied to you. It was not $56 million. In fact, either they made that number up or they threw it in the air deliberately to confuse you and to deceive you. On top of that, we also know they got hospitals on software. And if you add all of that, you add contingency, the unnecessary registration of 17 million people all over again, you are getting to close to $150 million of you and I's money being blown for reasons that nobody can explain in this country. Yeah, some of you may be saying, yeah, you're for this money, people book long, you know, you're going to want to go and register small to look at all these numbers. You know, I mean, money is not everything. We will grant you that. The world is not all about money. Yeah, that's 100 and something million dollars. If they spent a little bit of it on uh, dialysis machines for Ghana, we we'll do much better. If you ask people what is the waiting period for dialysis machines in Ghana, you'll be shocked. The whole country does not have even more than 150 dialysis machines. If you have somebody who has a kidney problem, ask them the waiting period to get dialysis. And when you get that dialysis, how much it costs. This amount of money, the $150 million, can bring Ghana's kidney management program to the WHO's best practice. So think of it. It's not just money. 